So we begin the season of Lent. This is being the first Sunday of Lent, and we just celebrated Ash Wednesday. And Lent is, as you know, is 40 days in preparation for the commemoration of Jesus' death on Good Friday and his resurrection from the dead on Easter Sunday. In the scriptures, there are many events that took a long time of 40 days or 40 years. So we think of the 40 years that the Israelites spent in the desert after leaving Egypt, going through the Red Sea, before entering the Promised Land. The 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert being subject to temptation. And also the 40 days and 40 nights that it rained during the time of the flood with Noah. All of these, we see, are times of purification. A time of letting go or putting to death the old way of life and preparing for a new one. And that's what Lent is for us too. A time to let go of or put to death the old way of life, a life of sin, and to prepare for a new life, a life of the Holy Spirit. And that's the good news that the Lord is come to be with us, and God is love. So the flood is an end to the old way of life of sin and hatred and murder that was going on at that time, for there to be a new beginning. And the Lord sent the rainbow as a sign of God's promise. So every time we see the rainbow, it's still a reminder that God will not destroy the world again by means of the flood. In other words, the Lord has a a new way of dealing with sin. It doesn't mean there's an end of sin in the world, but the new way is that Jesus has taken it upon himself on the cross. Rather than all the people receiving the punishment for their sin, now Jesus says, I will take it on myself and then forgive them. The flood was a way of putting an end, though, to sin and a new beginning to goodness. So we must imagine what it was like for Noah and his family to go on, the sh- on board the ark and see the flood destroy everything. They had to let go of everything, their homes, whatever they had built up, it was all wiped away. But it was a new beginning, a new life, once the flood was over. And the same is true for us living a life with Jesus. Jesus says, whoever wishes to follow me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow after me. And so there's a certain sense of undergoing a death in our own lives, dying to ourselves so that we can live for Christ. A couple of experiences then of death. First of all, in Uh, Going through my father's death, he suffered from bone cancer in the end, and it was very painful. And so we had to make many decisions. Should we take him to the nursing home, the veteran's home? When should we do it? All these decisions and worries that once he passed away, we realized it doesn't really matter anymore, all these questions and worries that we had. What matters is praying for his soul and looking forward to being with him and everyone in eternal life. Secondly was a woman who was on a 30-day retreat with me uh, as I was making the 30-day retreat, and one of, the t- one of the days she was called to meditate on her own death. And so she said, I was sitting in the church praying, and there was a person sitting behind me who was distracting by their talking, and normally I would get up to move to another part of the church But then I said, I can't because I'm dead, so I just have to stay here. And then she said, I thought about all the lectures and the the talks that I was trying to get ready for, and then thought, well, they'll have to get someone else because I've died, I can't speak. And, And so the experience was really a freeing experience and a release of all the worries and cares that come to us to think about what is most important, and that is receiving God's love. For her on the retreat, that was what was most important, receiving God's love. Jesus says on the road to Emmaus to the disciples, was it not necessary that the Son of Man should suffer death 
and so enter into his glory. Lord, help us to die with you so that we may rise with you and live with you. This Sunday, uh, this is the second part of the homily now, it, you will notice in your pews the envelopes for the Catholic Ministries appeal for the Diocese of Winona, so if you want to pass those out with pencils at this time. And every year, this is the appeal taken up for the ministry in our church that takes place at the level of the diocese. There's many things that we can do at the parish level, but there's a lot of other things that happen only at the diocesan level, and so there is need of your support. First of all, uh, we talk about youth and young adult ministries. Totus Tuus is a summer catechetical program in which teams of college students uh, train and learn the catechism and then go out to the parishes and teach it to our young people. Steubenville retreats, these, are, these happen every summer in Rochester and uh, we have many students from our parish that attend that conference and uh, it's a life-changing moment for many of them. These are supported by the Catholic Ministries Appeal. And then the other youth events such as intermission, uh, the Blaze, other retreats for our young people, as well as Camp Summit, which is for uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. That's also an event that takes place in the summertime. The Teens Encounter Christ Retreat, there's one going on this weekend uh, in Mankato. And then the, the local parish support that is offered to youth and young adults, as well as the Focus Missionaries that, that we have two teams of at Winona State and Mankato State. Then there is Lay Formation and RCIA, the Institute of Lay Formation. Several people from our parish have benefited from that program of, of uh, learning instruction in the faith and then bringing it back to put it to use in our own parishes by leading Bible studies or, or uh, teaching others what they have learned. There's also ministry days in the summertime in uh, learning more about our Catholic ministry and then support for the right of Christian initiation for adults. The right of election will take place tomorrow in uh, Austin for our, P our candidates joining the church. Vocations, we have a vocation director, Father Jason Kern, who uh, meets with uh, men and women discerning calls to the priesthood or religious life. There are discernment groups that he organizes, and he also gives presentations to parishes and universities for vocations. Life, marriage, and family. We have the March for Life and Respect Life program promoting the gift of life in our diocese. Also the pre-Cana marriage preparation. Many of our couples preparing for marriage participate in the pre-Cana uh, retreats that are offered through our diocese. And also the, the annual retreat for married couples. Safe environment in, in providing virtus training for all of our volunteers and employees and teaching of the circle of grace uh, for our young people to understand proper boundaries uh, in their own life. Faith formation, support for the parish in providing faith formation throughout the diocese. There are 7,000 children educated in faith formation throughout our diocese in Winona. And catechetical day, all the teachers and volunteers come once a year to, or more to learn uh, more, some aspect of the faith. The Office of Catholic Schools, we have the director, uh, Marcia Stenzel, who supports us in many ways in operation of our Catholic schools. That is a diocesan office, as well as helping schools to be certified, which our school is about to be undergoing the certification and accreditation process. A mission advancement and evangelization, the TV mass, maybe some of you have watched the mass on television that's provided by this fund, and the courier, the diocesan newspaper, as well as the Newman centers, the staff uh, for those places is provided and covered by this appeal. Community service, Catholic charities, parish social ministry, and also Hispanic ministry. Tribunal services, those obtaining an annulment receive it free of charge from our diocese as it's covered by this appeal. And then also services for continuing education of uh, clergy, priests, and deacons in our diocese. So all these ways and many others is the ministry of the Catholic Church at the diocesan level. I encourage you to support the 
Catholic Ministries Appeal. You can fill out the pledge card now if you wish and put it in the basket, or uh, you've also received one in the mail. You can mail it back that way.